Do you love what you do every day? Do you wake up excited about your career, your business, your job? Do you like it some days? Do you like it most days? Or do you like it none days? Is it time to quit? Is it time to resign? Is it time to find a new job? The reverse of that, <laughs> if you employ people, have you ever woken up and thought, oh my God, I wish blah, 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 didn't work in my business anymore. I've done everything I possibly can to train them, excite them, motivate them, inspire them, get them to be the very best they could possibly be at this business and it just isn't working. So they need to be fired or they need to be coached off the team or you need to remove them out of the organization. So there's two parts to this really interesting process. Resignation, I want to leave and fire you, I need to get rid of you. Now, of course, we don't use those words anymore, depending on which country you live in, of course. Remember, there used to be a television show called, or had that those words in them, you're fired. But it's so unusual now to be able to fire people. But there's a whole stack of people in the world that want to resign because they hate their job. And there's a stack of people that are employing other people and want to get rid of them because they're not doing their job very well. So what do we do about that? And if you're an employ employee, uh, how do you leave with grace, style and sophistication and make sure that you are remembered as a unique, special person that was in the business and you added value to the business, even if you hated working there? And if you need to remove somebody from the team because you're an employer, how do you do that with grace, style and sophistication so the person doesn't feel like they are a loser or they have disappointed you or they're just not good enough and they leave with poor self-esteem, poor self-confidence? So where do we start with all of that process? Well, how about we start at the beginning? If you are in an organization, whether you are an employee or an employer, what kind of relationship do you have? So has your employer trained you? Do they know what your goals are? Do they know what drives you? Uh, are they excited to have you employed there? Do you know what's expected of you? And do they inspect what they expect of you? And do they care about you? There's a great thing. If you feel cared about, if your boss is looking after you, if they're treating you well, if they're paying you well, if you've got great hours and you still want to leave because you want to go and start your own business or this is just not the career path for you, wouldn't it be a really good idea to leave that organization with grace and style? But the reverse of that, if you've got a lousy, stinking, rotten boss, you hate your hours, they don't pay you enough, they treat you badly, they're terrible people and you just got to get the hell out of there. The question is, did you interview your way into that business? And regardless of everybody else's reputation and regardless of what everybody else does, what about your reputation? And I've often asked this question, do you want to lower your high standards to the low standards of the people around you? So if somebody treats you really badly, do you want to treat them badly back? And if you do, what does that say about you? So my first uh, request, because I deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis where people hate their boss and they want to leave, or a boss hates their employees and they want them to leave, and it's a toxic relationship. And nobody wants to be part of a toxic relationship. It's stressful, it's ugly, it's horrible. Uh, well, I don't know. Are there people who love drama? I don't know. I hope not. Because all of those things cause stress for people. And I think it'd be awesome. If people ask me, Roe, what is it that you do? I always say, I help people have a career that they love or a, or a business that they're passionate about. And I want people to be healthy, fit and strong, have a career or a business that they love, be financially free and be in great relationships. All the relationships in their life, whether it's boss and employee, whether it's partner, family, friends, sporting coach, whatever it is, I would love people to get on really well. How about you? So uh, regardless of the way people treat you, if it's time to leave a business, could we just quickly run through your headspace? Would it be a good idea to do these things? It's a simple list of things. Number one, would it be a good idea to let people know that you don't want to work there anymore rather than just stay? The worst thing that people do when they hate their job and they hate their boss and they're really miserable and they're not doing a good job is they stay. That's not good for you. It's not good for your headspace. And of course, your boss is looking for a way to fire you if that's, the, if that's what's going on. And for most bosses, and I'll just give you the insight there, it's really hard to fire people emotionally, but it's also very hard legally to fire people. So if, you, if there's a toxic relationship, wouldn't it be just a really good idea for you as an employee to get the hell out of there? Just resign. 
And when you do resign, could we do it with grace and style and could these things be included? Number one, let people know that you're going to leave. Don't text them. Don't send them an email. <laughs> don't Facebook them. How about let them know personally face-to-face? -face? As an adult, this relationship's not working out. I'm not happy here. These are the reasons why I'm going to leave and this is when I would like to leave. Could you share with me how we could work that out effectively so it's a win-win? And the really important thing here is win-win because if you win and then the employer loses, there's, there's going to be a bounce back or a bite back sometime in the future. Somewhere, and if you think the world's a big place, it just isn't. Somewhere, sometime, that boss is going to come in connection with another boss of yours or a client of yours, and they're going to say horrible things about you, and it's going to be really bad for your reputation. So wouldn't it be nice if you left an organization with everybody really happy that you were there, and even if they're really happy that you were gone, they respect the way that you did it. So resign face-to-face, -face, let people know you're not happy, these are the reasons why, and this is when I'd like to leave, what's the win-win situation? So you might have a lousy, stinking, rotten boss who blows up when that happens. If you blow up back, <laughs> what would that say about you? So how about with respect and a quiet voice, just say, well, this is obviously the reason why I need to leave. I would like to give you the required amount of notice and you will have somewhere in a legal document when you first became part of the organization that says you have to give X number of weeks or months notice. You need to do that. And now comes the interesting part. So if you don't like your job, the silliest thing to do is stay. The best thing to do is resign, go find another career path, open up your own business, do what you love. Because there's nothing worse in life than having a job that you don't like. I can't imagine anything worse. So you, ha you are leaving. <laughs> You've told them that you're leaving. Most people now leave even though they've given four weeks notice, or even if they've given six months notice, their headspace is already gone. So the quality of their work, uh, the way they do their job, uh, the, the respect that they put into, their, into the organization is obviously zero, or mostly zero. I'm leaving in four weeks time, or I'm leaving in six months time, and I don't care anymore. Oh, I had a great quote today. Uh, there is not one athlete on the planet who has given less than the hun less than 100% who lives without regret. I'm going to say that again. There's not one athlete on the planet that has given less than 100% and lives without regret. And that's an interesting headspace, I think, for all employees. If you leave an organization and you gave them less than 100%, is it possible that you could live with some form of regret? If you leave an organization having given 100%, done your best, been the best employer they've ever had, worked really hard, added value to the business, and you left because you didn't like the people or you didn't respect the boss or you weren't proud of the product or service or you just wanted to go and do something else or you wanted to open up your own business, what a nice way to leave. I left with my head held high, my shoulders pulled back, I put in 100% effort and I have no regrets. I added value to this organization. And it's a great philosophy that I was taught a very long time ago, which is rowing, leave a profit. If you're going to leave anywhere, whether it's a public toilet, a restaurant, somebody else's house or an organization after you've worked there for 30 years, leave a profit, which means leave it better than you found it. So that when I was there, this became better because I was there. Now for me, that's picking up the paper in a public toilet. It's taking my plate and cut back to the kitchen at a restaurant. It's uh, putting away whatever is sitting around in somebody's house or helping to clean up or buying a gift if I go to visit somebody. And certainly if I work in somebody's organization, I want to have a reputation of we're really happy Rowie was there because she added value to the business. She added profit to the business. And profit doesn't have to come in the form of money. It just can be that you added value to the organization. You make people feel better. So if you want to leave like that, there's some things that you have to do. Resign, give the amount of notice that's required or more, and then make sure that you train the next person to be better than you. It's a really interesting headspace because what happens, most people don't train anybody, <laughs> so the new person comes on board and has to guess everything, and if it's a bad boss, this poor person really has to guess because the boss doesn't train them properly. 
Uh, if you uh, come into an organization and somebody's training you who hates the organization, is it possible that they will teach you or train you in all of their terrible ways? So they'll, tr they'll teach you to do all the terrible things that they did. Somebody leaving that's got a really big ego and somebody that's arrogant, they don't want the next person to be better than them. <laughs> so they don't train them very well, which means the next person doesn't have a great reputation because they have to try and work everything out. So wouldn't it be nice if when you leave, not only do you train the next person, but you train them to be better than you? So that people say, oh wow, Rowie was a great part of this organization. But the person that she trained after she left was even better. They were amazing. What a great reputation to have. So don't stay in a job that you don't like. Resign with uh, dignity and respect. Give the right amount of notice. Train the next person to do your job better than you do. Then everything that you have to do before you leave, get it done. Wouldn't it be nice if the next person didn't have to open up a cupboard and didn't know what was in there? Or they opened up a file in a computer and it was a big mess. Most people leave their desk in a mess, they leave their computer in a mess, they leave their past career in a mess, move on to something else. And my question is always this, if you are leaving a mess behind you, what's going to be your reputation? She's the mess maker. And or what does that do to your own headspace? And I'll go back to that quote. If you do anything less than 100%, is it possible that you'll live your life with regret? So how about leave every organization better than you found it, the next person trained better than you and they do a better job than you do, and no skeletons in the closet. And the other really thing, interesting thing to consider is if you've got anything in your headspace, in your heart that you're bitter and twisted about, share it, get it off your chest. Because there's two parts there. One is you don't want to take that baggage with you. And you don't want to get three years down the track saying, God, I wish I'd said that before I left. And I've met a lot of people like that. They're really bitter and angry and twisted about a boss or an organization that they worked in years ago. They haven't gotten over it. You don't want to be waking up in the middle of the night going, God, I wish I'd gotten angry before I left. Or I wish I'd told them what I thought. So how about tell them what you think? These are the reasons that I'm leaving. These are the reasons that I think the organization isn't working well. I think that this business could be more profitable if you did this. Whatever list of things you've got going on in your headspace. I often hear this, if this was my business, I'd do it better. Well, this could be a great opportunity to share with the people in the organization how you would do it better. And why not? For your own personal headspace. The next part of that is, again, the win-win is... Even if the person that you're sharing the information with doesn't believe you or they justify or they get angry or they get defensive, they can't unhear what you said. So next time that situation arises, they might do it differently. I'm not promising that they will, but they might. If you share with them that they've been rude or disrespectful or hypocritical or any of the things that people say about bosses or managers... It is possible that if you give great feed forward and you give it in a respectful way, I never say feedback because I think it should take you forward, not backwards. Uh, if you do it beautifully, is it possible that it could make a difference? Now, it might not, but it will certainly make a difference to you because you can offload the stress, offload the garbage, offload the drama and move on. You don't want to leave an organization all bitter and twisted and angry and be angry in the future. So I'll just wrap all of that up. Don't stay somewhere where you're not happy. Don't have a lousy, stinking, rotten job. Just don't do it. You don't have to anymore. The world has plenty of places for you to work. And there's ultimately, I'd love you to have your own business where you choose your own hours, be your own boss, do it your way, go on holidays when you want to go on holidays, earn the amount of money that you want to earn, and literally be in control of your life. But if you want to work in an organization, make sure if you're leaving this one, you find now the one that's really going to be the best one for you, that's going to give you what you need. It's rewarding. It's respectful. It's, it does all the things that you need because now you get to choose. You, as an employee, get to choose what you want to do or you can go and do what you're really passionate about and perhaps open up your own business. So don't stay if you don't love it. Resign with respect. And you've got to know that it's so much easier if your boss doesn't have to fire you. So much easier if you get to resign. Resign with the respect. Give the right amount of notice. Train the next person to be better than you. Don't leave a mess behind. And if you've got anything to say, make sure that you say it so that you can leave with your head held high knowing that you gave 100% and you did the best that you could possibly do for this organization. 
because there's a, there's the question in in my mind always either you didn't love this job so you should never have been there been there in the first place you had a lousy stinking rotten boss who didn't respect you so you couldn't work with that person you had a team of people around you that you either didn't like or didn't respect or they didn't treat you respectfully or you're in the wrong position often people go into a business and the boss or the manager puts them into that role without considering what you love what you're excited about what you're passionate about what you're really good at what you want to do they often don't even ask so if you're in that position where you've been in the wrong you, you might have been on the right team but you're in the wrong spot and and you can't get out of that spot make sure when you go again into a new organization that you go to the right organization and get on the right spot and have a life that you love because you want to wake up every day loving to go to work yeah wouldn't that be awesome so wouldn't it be nice to leave an organization like that with style grace sophistication be an adult be respectful and leave knowing that you are the best person they've ever employed wouldn't that be a great reputation to have haha -ha. now we're at the reverse you have to fire somebody because the person that isn't doing their job properly, they're not adding value to the business, they're disrespectful, they're not doing the role the way they're supposed to, you can't trust them, they're not loyal, all the reasons that bosses want to fire people. And I'm just going to put in an interesting side note there. If you are an employee and you're made redundant or the boss is trying to fire you or you know they're trying to get rid of you and I'm sure you've had that gut feeling where you think, yeah, I know, I really, I'm probably going to lose my job because I'm not good at what I do there's a reason for that <laughs> if you're adding value to a business if you're really good at what you do if you're adding profit to the business respectfully because often there are people who uh, they make the business a lot of money but they're terrible people uh, often a good boss and a, a, certainly the good owner of a business will, will not want that kind of person in the business sometimes we just can't afford the profitability of a, of a, of a team player they might be earning you a lot of money but they're a terrible person so as an adult, again, you should be able to figure that out. This is not working and I need to resign. Can I promise you that if you're adding value to the business, you're really good at what you do, uh, the boss likes you and they don't, they don't want to lose you. I'll just make a statement. They don't want to lose you. If the business is not working or it's, there's a, and we've been through some interesting times in history where uh, the government has controlled the business or the, when the business can open or whether it can even operate, uh, that's when a, an employer has been in a really interesting situation where they don't want to lose this person, but they have to because they just can't afford to pay them anymore, for example. But can I promise you that a, a top-level business person, an entrepreneur, somebody that has is constantly thinking and growing and coming up with new ideas, even if the government's trying to control their business or shut it down or control its hours or if there's a global financial crisis or there's something going on in the world that this business can't operate effectively, a really good business person is already thinking about their next business or how to turn this business around. And they're going to keep the good people. As a very personal and private note that as an employee you might not know, uh, most business owners, most managers, owners, bosses, uh, they look for those tough times in history, global financial crisis, worldwide medical pandemic, bushfires, floods, all the things that happen. They are opportune times to get rid of the bad team players because often that's when the government is a little bit more lenient on firing legal uh, leg or legislation. So often if there's a global financial crisis and the business is going to go insolvent, uh, the, the government makes it easier to make people redundant. And most great business operators will use that opportunity to get rid of the bad team players. They're already looking at the next business. They know that they're going to be successful because all entrepreneurs, they never give up. They just keep going. It doesn't matter if they go bankrupt or the government closes them down. Really good business, business operators will always keep going. And they, they have to take with them good people. It's not that they even that they want to, and of course they want to, but they have to because really great people are hard to find. So if you're an extra mile person, if you always give 100%, if you always add value to the business, if you add profit to the business in a beautiful, respectful way, your boss is not trying to lose you. And even if they have to make you redundant for whatever reason, you will be the first person they call when they open up the next business, or you'll be the first person they call when they go to another business and have to employ people. Can I promise you that? If you're a great person, if you're respectful, if you're good at what you do, and you keep aiming to get better at what you do you are always employable 
And I always ask people that question because some people have said to me, oh, Rory, I'm unemployed. Well, I always say congratulations. <laughs> you should probably be unemployable because employment means you have a boss who's controlling your life and your hours and your income. Wouldn't it be great to choose your own hours, be your own boss? Now, I'm a classic example of never having started a business. I'm not an entrepreneur, but every business I've ever gone into, I've grown it made it more profitable, given it better systems, made it more successful, made, made it a better place to be. And that's made me very, very valuable to the business. I've never had to work for a wage. I've always had, I've always, always been a, a, a contractor, a subcontractor. And I'll go a step further than that. I've always backed myself where I know that I can add value to the business, which means I want to take a percentage of the profit because I know that I can grow the business, which means then I want to be paid for what I'm worth. All of that's very hard to find. So if you're one of those people, your boss, your owner, your manager, the person who runs the organization, whether it's a sporting team or an orchestra or a big business or a tiny business or an online business, if you're employed by somebody, you're involved in a business and you're really good at what you do, they don't want to lose you. So if you've got that feeling <laughs> that your boss wants to fire you, is it possible that deep down in your soul, you know why? Would it be a really good idea then, rather than put that person through the stress of having to fire you and going through the process, because we don't fire people anymore, we have to coach them off the team. We have to go through a big, long, expensive, horrible process to get rid of terrible people off a team. It's really hard to remove people from a team once you've employed them. So again, another interesting side note, if you're applying for a position and somebody's going to pay you $5,000 a year or $50,000 a year or $500,000 a year, it's a risk. Because <laughs> once you're on the team and once you're being paid, it's very difficult to remove you off that team. It's the biggest risk in business. Employing people is by far the biggest risk, the most hassle. It's a pain in the backside. But as most business owners know, they can't do it on their own. They have to have people to help them. So they're always looking for great people. So if you've got that gut feeling that this relationship has gone sour, that this relationship's not going to work anymore, could it be a respectable thing to do to just resign and do it beautifully? If you're a boss, a manager, a leader, the owner of a business, and the person doesn't resign and they're not doing their job properly, there's three really important questions to ask. Number one, have I trained them effectively? Do they actually know how to do their job properly? And we have to take responsibility for that. If you don't train people properly and they don't know what to do and they're trying to do their job by mind reading and they keep stuffing up, that's not the employer's fault, is it? <laughs> it's me. It's I'm the boss. I have to take responsibility that I didn't train them properly. The next thing I have to ask myself is, does this person uh, love what they do? Do I know why they love it? If they don't love it, what could I do to change it? Do I know what their goals are? Do I know their family situation? Do I know how, how much money they need to earn? Maybe it's the hours that they're working that aren't working. If, I've got the, if I think I've got the right person because I've been through the right attractment process and I've trained them effectively and I can tick that box, yes, I know that they know what they're supposed to do, but what if they're in the wrong role? Maybe they're the right person for my business, but they're just in the wrong spot because it's the wrong hours or they're working with the wrong people or it's the wrong skill set. I have to take responsibility for that. So they might be the right person, but have I got them in the right spot? And do they know how much I appreciate them and care about them? And I always ask this question of every business owner because I've done in my lifetime literally uh, coached thousands of businesses, thousands of businesses to get better. <laughs> and the number one question I ask every employer who's complaining about their team players, but I still ask every employer even if they're not, who are they? What do they stand for? What are their core values? What are their goals? What's their family situation? How much money do they need to earn? When do they want to go on holidays? What's the best hours for them to work? What's the, what are the things in their life that they want to own? Do their kids want to go to, or do they want to send their kids to a private school? Uh, what kind of car do they want to drive? What kind of house do they want to live in? What kind of clothes do they love to wear? Because they're the driving forces for people who work for someone else. And often bosses think, well, you have to do what I tell you to do because I'm paying you wages <laughs> and then wonder why people want to leave because they don't care about them. So have you trained the right, per have you found the right person? Have you trained the right person? Are they in the right spot? 
And are they getting what they need from your organisation? Now, if you can tick all of those boxes and you've still got somebody who's not performing well, is it possible that you have a bad apple? They've got bad, they're, they've, they've got bad character traits or they're lazy or they're undisciplined and they're not adding value to your business. Now, they might be really good on somebody else's team. Uh, and I use the sporting analogy for that. I might not be world championship level for football playing or for, for um, uh, a martial art or for uh, playing rugby league. I might not be at the top level. But I might be the best in the community team. I might be the best for the state team or the national team, just not for the world championship team. So sometimes, and I've done this many times in my career path because I've employed thousands of people as well, is my organisation's not the right one for this person, but I find the right one for them. Maybe the pressure's not so high, maybe it's a different skill set, maybe it's a different atmosphere. I've had a lot of people, and a surprise, surprise, I've had a lot of people say to me, Rowie, I can't work here anymore, I can't be happy every day, it's too hard. Literally, I've had, and I've, many more than one person has said that to me, because there's a very high expectation, obviously, in our environment, that you're going to be a positive, optimistic solution finder all of the time, that's the expectation. And for some people that's really hard. So for people that have come to me and said that, I know that they're a great person and I know that they've got a, they love their life or they've got the, what they wanna do in their life. I always know that about my team players. So I, okay, well let's find the right place for you. What do you actually want to do? And lots and lots of my team players, I've ended up placing them in somebody else's business. It's a, just a different organization with a different philosophy and a different headspace. There are some organisations where it is kind of okay to go in a bit grumpy because the boss is a bit grumpy sometimes too and they don't care. So have I found the right person? Have I trained them? Are they in the right spot on the team? If this is not the right team for them, could I find them another team? And the only way that I would be able to do that, <laughs> and I'm not firing them, I'm not making them redundant, I'm not sacking them, and I'm not getting rid of them. We're going to have an adult conversation about the role they're in at the moment. And if I'm not checking in with that person regularly, when I say regularly, if this is a top performer, I would be talking to them every day uh, and we would be having a personal catch up at least once a week. If they're part of the 80-20 team, and I always use this example in business because it's a rule of business, 20% of your team players will give you 80% of your results. 80% of, you, of your team players will give you 20% of the results. This 20% group, obviously you don't want to lose them. This one's going to turn over probably quite quickly. But your 20% group, you want to keep them. So are you spending individual time with each one of those people? The people that give you the best results, the hardest workers, the people with the, the strong, tough characters, the people with resilience, the people that are making money for your business and treating it like their own, are you looking after them? And if you're not, that's another thing to ask yourself. Maybe I'm going to lose them because I don't care about them. If you are investing quality time, individual quality time with these people and they're not performing, now how do I find the right place for them to perform? So that's a personal conversation. We're going to sit down together. Obviously, this relationship's not working. You need to share with me. I know that you know how to do this. You, I've seen you do it. I've trained you. I, I know that you've watched the video on how to do it. You've read the manual on how to do it. I've seen you operate at 100% performance. Obviously, that's not happening at the moment. What do I need to do as your leader, as the coach, to make sure that you can perform at, that, at this particular role? Or... Do you not want to perform at this role anymore? Or am I doing something that's stopping you from performing at this role? This is an initial chat. And if you do this effectively, the person will resign. They'll be so grateful that you've come to them personally and said, I know that you're not happy. I want to make sure that you're happy. What do I need to do to make you happy? How can we make this work? How can we create a win-win situation? And if you do it beautifully with grace and sophistication and style, often a person will resign right there. They'll just say, look, thank you, Rowie. I really appreciate the fact that you've talked to me personally about this. I've been thinking about resigning for a long time. I want to go and open my own business or I want to go and travel or I'm getting married or I'm having a baby. I didn't know how to resign. I really appreciate that you've come to me personally. How simple is that? That is step one, though, if the person needs this job <laughs> or they are adamant that they're going to stay here because they have to, well, they might just want to be a pain in your ass. I don't know. But there are some people that even if you have an adult conversation with a win-win, I, I want to find you the best place to, to 
to enjoy your career path or I want to find out how I can help you to make sure that you enjoy this one, uh, they still don't perform. So you might walk away from this conversation. They say, yes, Rowie, thank you very much. I really appreciate the fact that we've had this chat. I'm going to be a 100% person now. I'm going to arrive on time, wear my uniform, be nice to the customers, clients, and members. I'm going to follow the systems that I know how to follow because you know that I know how to do it and everything's going to be fine from here, which is a win-win. Uh -huh. <laughs> At least they don't. Now what do you do? Now we have to have a second conversation. Now, depending which country you live in, and I've managed health clubs in multiple countries, so this has been a really interesting experience, particularly when I managed health clubs in Belgium and France where I couldn't speak the language. So I had to get a translator for the, for the HR rules. It was a complicated situation. But <laughs> every country has, has rules for firing people, rules for giving people notice, rules for motivating people to get better at what they do. There's rules for mediation, and you have to know the rules for your country. But ultimately, it's usually either a three to five step process, but you have to document it. There's too much of he said, she said. And if you go to mediation, for example, which I have been to many times, uh, the, the mediator and then unfortunately the judge at employment court is not interested in he said, she said. It has to be documented. So whatever conversation you had, you either ask the person, do you mind if I record it? Or you have to take minutes of that meeting or you have to e uh, send an email at the end of that meeting to say, this is what we covered in the meeting. Can you please sign it off to make sure that I've got it exactly right? And that's a beautiful thing to do, by the way, because you have a conversation with somebody and you say, look, I just want to paraphrase back to you what we've talked about. And I'm going to keep a record of that. I'm going to send it to you and then you're going to sign it to make sure that I got it right. So please have a read of it. And if I didn't get it right... Could you please let me know and change it because I don't I don't I want to make sure that I understood everything that you shared with me. Now again, if you do this really well with style and grace and sophistication, this person might now finally realize we're serious here. They don't want me to work here anymore. This is not a good situation. I really need to get out of here. One of the interesting things that I always do when I have and these conversations for me have always been in, in one, two, three, four, five when I first started employing people and the employment rules were different in Australia where I first started employing people, there was a time in Australia where you could just fire people. There was no challenge with that. Uh, and then there was another time where if you employed less than 50 people, you could fire anybody. Really interesting, the, the, uh, the economy of the country was going very well then because when you keep the right people in your business, then your business works really well. If it's easy to get get rid of people, fire people, uh, move people off the team that aren't doing their team their job well, then the business goes better. So it's an interesting political headspace for that as well. And there's a lot of argument for both of those. But I've, again, learned the hard way and I hope I save you a whole heap of time and money and stress and hassle by this beautiful process. So first conversation, I know that you know how to do it. No, I'll go back. The first conversation is with yourself. Have I trained... Did I find the right person? Did I train them effectively? Are they in the right spot? Do I know everything about them that I need to know to make sure that they can perform at their best? And if the answer is yes, and you can put your hand on your heart and say, yes, I've done all of those things. Now I have to remove this person because they're not adding value to the business or they're detracting value from the business or we're losing money because of them or they're just a bad apple. First conversation. Are you happy? What can we do? I know that you know how to do this job correctly. I, I, I've always believed in you. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have put you onto the team if I didn't believe in you. Now you have to share with me how I can help. If that conversation goes further than that because they didn't resign, you have to document that Johnny promised that based on his performance, even though he was underperforming in this area, this area, this area, and this area. And they're the questions you have to ask. Johnny, I know that you know how to vacuum the, the gym. I've seen you do it. You've ticked it off. I went into the gym today. It wasn't vacuumed. I know that you know how to do it. Can you share with me why it wasn't done? And if you've got four or five of those, you, and again, it has to be documented, but Johnny has to explain to you why he isn't doing what he's supposed to do. If he leaves that first conversation and says, yes, I'm going to do it, <laughs> and you go back into the gym and the, the floor's not vacuumed, now you have your second conversa conversation with Johnny. Johnny, I'm very disappointed that the gym floor's not vacuumed. Again, we've had this conversation. I know that you know how to do it. There's obviously an underlying challenge. You really need to talk to me. 
Now, again, if you're very privileged, Johnny will resign now. He'll say, yes, Aunt Rowie, after our last chat, I've decided this is not the place for me. Thank you very much for talking to me and I'm going to give my notice. From an employer's point of view, I'm going to give you something very controversial. Uh, it's called the Go Away Fund or the Get Be, Be Resigned Now Fund. Because often when people resign, and I'll use the reverse, I'm going to give you four weeks notice, but they quit then. <laughs> Even though they they actually work through for four weeks, most people's headspace quits when they resign. It just stops. So wouldn't it be nice to say thank you very much, here's four weeks wages, here's four weeks salary, thank you very much for being here, but it's a really good idea for us to finish this situation right now if somebody resigns. Now, that you still have to pay them, obviously, but I promise you from so, so much personal experience in my businesses and other people's businesses that having somebody in your business for four weeks who isn't there, uh, you have to pay them anyway and they can do so much damage in that four weeks, so much damage, thousands if not millions of dollars worth of damage. So it's a really good idea to have a fund, <laughs> a bank account separate, that if somebody resigns and they, you need them to leave straight away, that you have the funds to pay their salary and they can go straight away. Uh, just, again, I cannot share with you how much time, hassle and money that has saved me and hundreds of the, thousands of the businesses I've been involved in. So Johnny doesn't do what he's supposed to do the second time. You have to share with him it's a question. It's always questions. If you make statements, you're always going to get into, into trouble. But if you ask Johnny very respectfully and kindly, Johnny, you need to share with me what's happened. I know that you know how to do this. The last time we had this conversation, you said that you were going to do it. It still hasn't been done. What are we going to do about that? What should we do? If you were me, Johnny, what would, what would you do? Ask lots of questions. And again, as I'll share... This is a time when Johnny gets to say, okay, Rowie, I, I agree, this is not the right place for me. But that might not happen. You might have to go further than that. Once you go further than that, though, you have to give written uh, warning. There's often, in some countries, they call it, the first one's a verbal warning. I don't like it to be a warning. I just like it to be a conversation. Do you want to do your job properly? I know that you can. Are there any reasons why you're not doing your job properly? Let's document that. There's no warning of being fired. Uh, when you get to the second conversation, though, you have to put something in, on paper to cover you off legally to say, this is the second time we've chatted about this, Johnny. Uh, I don't know what to do now because I put you on the team because I believed you were the right person. I've trained you. I know that you can do it. I know that your goals are to go surfing in Bali four times a year. I know that you like to finish at three o'clock in the afternoon and I know that you absolutely love spending time with your dog. I, I want all of that for you. If this is not the right place for you, I'd love to help find you a great place and I would love to give you a great reference. I will be part of the process of finding you the right place if this is not the right place for you and I'll be very happy to give you a great reference. And you, the only way that you can say that, by the way, is if you've gone through that initial chat with yourself, which is... Have I found the right person? Great attractment process. Have I trained them effectively? Have they been in the right spot? And do I know all the reasons why they're here? And have I helped them achieve those goals? If I haven't done all of those, I have to take full responsibility. That's my fault that that person's not performing. It's not their fault. It's mine. But if I've gone through that process and I actually know that Johnny wants to go uh, surfing in Bali four times a year and he wants to play with his dog and he doesn't definitely wants to be um, uh, traveling and uh, living a different lifestyle than what this, this particular career path can offer him, then we have to come up with a solution. But at the second conversation, <laughs> I have to share with Johnny, we can't have this conversation again. What do you think I'm going to have to do if I have to talk to you the third time about this list of things? And usually it's not one thing. Uh, and I've used the example before, I have been caught before because I've fired people, removed people from the team for stealing money or being dishonest or sleeping with the members. I've, there's been lots of reasons why I've gotten into trouble for firing people because I would have thought that that's, they're pretty logical things. If you sleep with the members, if you, uh, if you steal money, if you're not loyal to the organisation, that that's a good reason to fire people. It actually isn't if you haven't got that in your in the rules and regulations of the organization, if you haven't got that in, in the training package, 
If you don't have a video for that that says to people, uh, in this organisation, you can't sleep with the members, uh, then they go and do that, then you can't fire them. <laughs> you have to go through this process. So chat number one, chat number two, but at chat number two, there has to be something that says, what do you think we should do uh, if this happens again? You might go to three, four, five. I hope you don't have to, but once you get to three and you've got that same list of things, uh, now it's a very serious written warning. It's not, let's have a chat now. Johnny, this is the third time we've chatted about this. This organisation is really important to me. This product or service I'm passionate about. I've got a team of people to look after. I know that you can do this role effectively, but you're just not. What are we going to do about that? has to be quiet, has to be respectful, it has to be kind, but it has to be tough. It's one of the things when I, people ask me, Rowie, who are you? I've got that list of, of words that I've, I've lived by since I was 18 years of age. Tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined and professional. The first one is tough and fair. I'm really tough, but I'm very fair. By the time we get to the third conversation, we have to have a conversation about the reasons why you're not gonna be on this team anymore. But once again, it's not about firing you. It's not about you're a terrible person. It's not about I don't like you. It's what do we need to do to make sure that you have the life that you wanna live? So once again, I'm making this offer. I'm gonna find a team for you. I'm gonna write you a reference. What do you need to be able to go to a place where you're gonna be able to perform at your best? Because this is the third time we've talked about what you're capable of doing, but obviously this must be now that you don't want to do it. Would that be fair? Now, four and five, they're, they're, they get to be quite serious and they should be very short. If you're talking to somebody the fourth time and the fifth time, by the time you get to the fifth time, everything's documented, everything's recorded, uh, the person signed off on the conversation. I'm not going to say that you're covered off from employment court. I'm not going to say that you won't get an unfair dismissal, dismissal charge because many businesses... <laughs> People will still try it on. They will still try and take you to court even though you've gone through that long, beautiful process. But the mediation lawyers, <laughs> the unfair dismissal lawyers will all share with me that most people who end up in unemployment court in unfair, with an unfair dismissal charge, it's because they didn't do one, two, three, four, five. In fact, most people didn't even do one. They just fired somebody. And more importantly, they didn't do find the right person, train the right person, make sure they're the right person for the role and make sure that that person's getting everything they need to be able to be the very best they can be for that role. And that's why there's so much money that gets given out to employees because employers don't take the time to go through that process. So here's the win-win. <laughs> if you don't like your job, quit. Do it with grace, style and sophistication. Give the right amount of of notice, train the next person to be better than you, leave everything better than you, excuse me, better than you found it. And if you've uh, got anything that you need to talk about, make sure you get it off your chest before you go. Great idea. If you're an employer and you've got a bad apple on your team and you know that they're a bad apple because you've done everything you possibly can to, to help, and usually the first chat is more about being able to help, by the time you get to third, fourth, fifth chat, you should be able to put your hand on your heart and say, I have done everything I possibly can for Johnny, but Johnny just doesn't want to be here. So if he's not going to resign, he's going, we're going to have to coach him off the team. And this is a coaching process. And now, Johnny, it's time for you to go and be on somebody else's team. Now, I've given you an overview and a very fast overview and it's gonna be different for every country. And we have max professionals in 17 countries right now. So every country has a different employment setup, different employment laws, different HR rules and regulations. So whatever country you're in, you have a responsibility to learn those rules, regulations and laws for, uh, for human uh, relations, for uh, employing people. And most importantly, this process that I've skimmed over is a part of the personal coaching program at Max. Your business diploma is not only here for a lifetime to help you with this, because this is one of those beautiful things when you'll actually realize that this is a long-term lifetime education. It's not going anywhere. Because often people come to Max and they start off as self-employed people and they are just the one person on their team. It might be three, four, five, even 10 years before you start employing people. And that's when this all, all comes into play. And that's when we need to do personal coaching session. And this particular process of 
putting people onto your team and how to get rid of people that aren't the right person for your team, how to coach them off the team with grace, style and sophistication. That is a beautiful process that we want to do personally and we have to do it in sync with the rules and regulations of the country that you're in at the moment. So I'll do the research for your country if we do this as a personal coaching session to make sure that this is done beautifully. Resign with style, grace and sophistication. Make sure that you coach people off the team with style, grace and sophistication. And wouldn't the world be a better place if we just found the right place for us to earn money, to live our passion? I hate to use the word work because work's doing something when you'd rather be doing something else and having a job is just over broke. I would like everybody to wake up every day doing what they love, being passionate about it, being excited about going to the place where they earn money and adding massive value to the world with whatever they're doing. Wouldn't that be awesome? Woohoo! <laughs> I feel good. No, 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 because I do what I love now. No, 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 no. So good. <laughs>